who's here? Say hi, honey. Boy. Don't bite that. Welcome back to a brand new video. This is a very chill one. We do a lot of like worky things in the studio. I filmed a lot over the weekend, which I typically don't do. So there's a lot of like um, relaxing. I crochet so much in this video. We also cook dinner. I make meatballs. We'll see you back here at the end of the video. Bye. So before we go any further, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Book of the Month. <laughs> if you didn't already know, Book of the Month is a service that helps readers discover new books they love. And they also also promote the work of new and emerging authors. They have this dedicated team of readers that comb through hundreds of titles each month to curate a really, really good small selection of books for you to choose from. You can spend less time like researching a new book and more time actually reading. They also help readers find new authors that they wouldn't have discovered on their own, which is really cool. They launched curated audiobooks recently, which you can just like download and listen to right in their app. Every month you can choose either a hardcover book or an audiobook. Now let's move on to the books that I selected this month. A Fate Inked in Blood by Danielle L. Jensen. This is a fantasy romance inspired by Norse mythology, which I just think is super fun. Fantasy romance is like my favorite genre to read. Um, so I'm very excited to get into this new release. This next book is Annie Bot by Sierra Greer. It explores the relationship between a female robot and her human owner. I am a primarily like fantasy slash dark academia reader. So I'm really excited to get into a different genre that I typically don't read. So go to bookofthemonth.com to pick out your first book. For a limited amount of time, you can get your first book for $9.99 with the code CHIRP. finished emailing my accountant that took so long I just had so many questions and I always like to like ask more questions so I can learn and just like do better for next year and then now I'm going to buy some tote bags I worked on a tote bag design I'll put in some clips of me designing that tote bag right now but yeah I really wanted to have new totes for mocha just because I did t-shirts last year and it was just not a good time I have my design ready so I'm just gonna go and like buy them it's gonna be over a thousand dollars to buy these tote bags but like you know you gotta do what you gotta do I'm gonna go with a new printing place this time around just to try it I want to print I guess more locally um and this place is based in Brooklyn which is really cool Lee what she preferred I showed her um, I showed her this size and this bigger size because I don't have anything in the middle between these two canvases believe it or not and she was just like I don't care or whatever you want to do so while this is more approachable I kind of just feel like working big and I feel like sending her something nice and large will be fun so I put it in a little like text above my head in the last scene, uh, but in case you didn't see it, Lee, Lee Ellickson asked me to do a traditional art trade with her. And of course, of course, I said yes. Um, I'm so, so happy that I will be like the very proud owner of a Lee Ellickson original, uh, but I'm not gonna lie, I had a lot of imposter syndrome. I was very afraid starting this piece because I was like oh my god like I'm I really do think of myself as a painting beginner and I, I still kind of see myself as like a beginner novice level um so I was like oh my god like this is gonna be like a like a master giving a painting to a little kid or something I don't know I just had a I was just very in my head about it but I'm very glad that like I managed to not overthink it just take up the canvas and go um and not like talk myself out of it and being like sorry Lee this, this just wouldn't be an ethical trade. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm really glad I, I did this and I'm very, very proud of what I ended up accomplishing. So take that imposter syndrome. <laughs>
uh, I really really like this piece. I think I'm getting a lot better at achieving these textures that I want. Um, ever since I started acrylic painting I would see other artists like just get these like gorgeous textures out of their acrylic paint and it's taken me a, a few years honestly to be able to get to that point where I'm like oh I love this texture um, and I don't really know what it is I'm doing. I think it comes to like um, I haven't really been doing like an underpainting. Uh, I don't know. I don't really do underpaintings correctly, but sometimes I'll just do like a wash of one color underneath. But lately I've just been letting it be white. Um, and I think that kind of helps me get a texture I like. And also I've been putting less paint on my brush. Sometimes I think I was putting too much on before and that would kind of stop the texture from coming out. Um, and I'm also still riding this wave of what I talked about in a previous video. It was my sketchbook one, if you haven't seen that one, it's a good video. Um, I was talking about how I've been drilling this mantra into my head that like, you don't have to be the best and you don't even have to be good. And that has just been so helpful with helping me like get out of my head and not feel this like extreme pressure I sometimes put on myself to just be like the best and like make really incredible work when I just I don't want to feel that way so yeah it's been nice Hello, hello, today's Friday. I did get a comment asking if I could talk about my Rizograph color wheel, which is pretty funny because like, I actually did film like a 10 minute long segment of me talking about that color wheel. And then while I was editing, I was like, this is so boring. No one's gonna wanna hear this. So I cut the whole thing out. So I think it's funny that someone actually was like, hey, like, can you talk about that? Um, so let's talk about it. So this is a color wheel that I purchased from Resolve Studio. And so because it turns, you can basically like, see what certain color combinations will look like together. And I find that so useful because sometimes you just kind of have to like imagine. Also, they have the, the colors printed in 10% density increments when you're like trying to figure out the density and the color lightness when you're preparing your files. Um, it's, it's cool to be like, oh, this is what 10% will opacity will look like. And then the back, my understanding of it is just that these are um, what different colors look like layered on top of each other. So if you're curious what like blue and red look like on top of each other, you can just like follow the chart and see like the, that intersection. On Thursday, which was the previous day that you're watching this, I did like enjoy the process of painting, but on this Friday, this next day that you're watching, I had so much fun painting. This is probably the most fun I've ever had painting something. I think it's a combination of just like me being in a very good mental space lately. Um, and also I put on like my AirPods and I listened to this playlist. I listened to the Pines radio. Uh, Pines by Men I Trust has been one of my like favorite songs recently. I've been like having it on loop and the radio just had like such fun music and I was just vibing. I was having so much fun. And this point in the process is always my favorite part. I love filling in these little details and carving out shapes. Um, yeah, it was a great time. The last time I talked about skincare with you guys, I talked about how this May Love Glow Maker Serum was making a difference, but I would like to retract that statement. I think this was making the difference because I took this out of my routine and I didn't notice any difference. So, um, and my sister has been using this as well and she's been telling me she really likes it. So 
this rice toner, I, I really, really like. It's become like my holy grail um, skincare thing. And I also have been using this Illyune Ceramide Atto Concentrate Cream for my new daily cream. I love, love, love my skin fix. Um, but it's just so expensive, so I've been trying to get like another cream to like use them in conjunction with each other. Um, it's definitely not as good as the Skin Fix, but um, it's still a great moisturizer. And then for sunscreen, I repurchased this one, the Isn't Tree Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel. So if you have any like favorite sunscreens, let me know. Hi guys! Cosmo, you're angry we kicked you off because you were scratching. Uh, my neighbor's TV is on full blast, so if you can hear that, I do apologize. So I just stopped by my sister's place and I picked up, I used this when I was a kid. My mom bought it in Taiwan when I was like a child. So it's a quite old book. It's from this place called Petite DIY series. I'm really not sure if it's one artist or like a team of artists. Um, I feel like it's one artist, but I, I mean, I really don't know. I think this is how a lot of patterns are written in Asia where it's more of a diagram rather than like just writing out like one increase, one, like five single crochet, whatever. I, I really like when patterns are written like this because it's so visual and it's just how I grew up reading patterns. Um, and the patterns are so cute. I really, really love um, the illustrations too of all the little guys. I think I'm gonna take this doggy right here and um, make it into a cat. Looking at this book makes me feel so nostalgic because I would make these all the time with my mom. So I have been working on all the body parts and I've finally finished all of them except for one ear, but I just thought I'd show you. So this is the head. I already kind of stuffed it a little just cause I wanted to see what it would look like. This is the body. You can kind of imagine what it's gonna look like. And then I did all the limbs. The limbs took me longer than I thought, um, but this, these are the legs. Freestyled this tail because there was like nothing in here. So I just kind of like, you know, figured it out. And then I did an ear and like, look how cute this ear is. So it's gonna look like this. Tonight we are going to be cooking a go-to meal that I've been making like every single week. It's like my new hyper fixation dinner. We're gonna be making meatballs with green beans. And if you've never made meatballs from scratch, I would highly recommend it. It comes together in like 30 minutes and I love a quick dinner. So yeah, I think 400. Okay, so I typically will put half an onion in here. I'm gonna put one egg. I'm gonna take some panko. I typically eyeball this. I've seen some recipes call for like a quarter cup, but um, I think I definitely put a little bit more. <laughs> Recently, I've been putting some like smoked paprika in here and I think the smoked flavor really comes out. Of course, salt. I'm not gonna put, I'm gonna put a like a good pinch of salt, adding like a little scoop of miso in here just to give it like a little bit of a, Umami. That's why I'm not gonna put that much salt because miso is super, super salty. So it's kind of just like whatever you feel like. And yeah, that's pretty much all the ingredients I put in. 
And I'm gonna mix it all up. I also would recommend, um, the other day, I ended up putting some shiitake mushrooms in here. I brown them. Um, I like cook them a little bit to get rid of the water um, and then put them in here and it was like so good. I make them a little bit larger than um, I guess like what you would buy in store. And I find that when I do this, I can make about nine meatballs. So let's see how many. Okay, perfect. 16 minute point, I like to pull it out and like check it to see if it's done. And if it's not, I just like put it back in. I think it ends up being in there for about 20 minutes, but I would just like keep an eye on it because everyone's oven is different. Okay, now I'm going to prep my little green beans. When I used to live in Brooklyn, my sister and I would eat green beans all the time. She taught me like, just like how to blanch them. And like, I feel like they taste so delicious um, when they're blanched. You wanna pour like a generous amount of salt. I like to just leave these in very, very quickly, like probably like a minute. I think I might've left them in too long. I should have done my ice bath before. Um, but yeah, and then you just like dunk them in to halt the cooking. Oh, I guess this is a warning. If you don't like the sound of like people chewing, skip the next like minute. See, they're crunchy. Before my sister showed me this, I had never eaten green beans like this before. So I had no idea they could taste so like, I just splashed myself. I had no idea they could taste so like nice and refreshing and like. This is the state of my cat plush. I'm honestly pretty impressed with how quickly I did this. Robert was saying like you did this so fast. Um, I embroidered this eye this morning and um, now I'm just gonna embroider the rest of the face. I thought we could close out this video by doing a nice long podcasty moment over all this drawing footage I captured. 
Um, speaking of podcasts, a very shameless plug is that I have a Patreon podcast where I record a new episode every month. There's like over 30 on there now. Um, and it's pretty good if I do say so myself. I've even started um, doing like reading wrap ups. So during the podcast, I talk a lot about like art and life and what I've been up to, some more personal stuff I normally divulge here on YouTube. Um, but lately I've been doing a reading wrap up, which has been really, really fun because I don't really share here with you guys like the things that I've been reading necessarily. Um, but I love reading and I read all the time and I, it's just becomes like such a fun hobby for me. I even got one of those like neck reading lamps um, to like read books in bed um, because I've been a little bit like annoyed with like how dark my lamp is. So now I have like really nice um, lights on my book while I'm reading. Um, but anyways, if you ever wanted to hear me chat about all kinds of things, including books and stuff, I have a Patreon podcast for that. Um, but yeah, anyways, um, I wanted to chat a little bit of just about like, I guess like a heart to heart update because <laughs> i feel like i haven't really been doing that lately um i don't know if you guys can tell but ever since i left la and moved to new york i have been very happy i think i've gotten a couple comments here and there about people being like you seem happier um and it is true i feel so much happier and i also feel like i have been liking my artwork more and which this isn't to say like i don't like any of the stuff i made last year or the years where i was in la um, but I think lately I have just been feeling really good about my work and I think the biggest difference is that I feel less um, serious about it. I feel like I'm taking my work a little less seriously. Um, it feels much less like life or death, like I need to make something good or else. Um, because I feel like I had such a serious take to my work before. I um, mean, it is serious to an extent, like it is my livelihood and I like, I do take it seriously, you know, to an extent. Um, but I've been feeling a lot less tied to my work, like my whole personality and my whole like essence of who I am is like super tied to my work and how I perceive how quote unquote good my artwork is. Um, and I think as a result, it's made art making a lot less pressureful. It's not a word. I, I just felt less pressure when making work, which is something I talked about earlier in this video. This whole thing about, you know, my new mantra it doesn't have to be good. You don't have to be the best. Um, and I think all of this has just been contributing to me liking my art more. And it's an incredible feeling. Um, yeah, and I, I, I'm not like creating more necessarily i think i'm making you know similar amounts as i used to but i think because i feel so much less like serious about it um when i do manage to make art i'm like yeah this is fun um so i kind of want to keep up this like light-hearted vibe towards my work um and especially with this fountain pen like i've just been having a lot of fun and also i've been working a lot less and i think experiencing life more um, I've been talking about this with some of my friends recently, but I just feel like I've been living more, which is really cool. Um, in LA, I didn't drive and you need a car <laughs> when you live in Los Angeles. I mean, some people don't, like I, like I, I wasn't able to drive, um, like when we need to go somewhere, like Robert would take me, you know, to the grocery store and whatnot. But when I went to the ceramic studio, sometimes when I hung out with friends, either they had to pick me up or like I would try to, you know, transit or Uber my way there. And it was just really hard for me to get around and do things and like see people and meet people. There were just like so many physical obstacles in the way of me like meeting people and getting out there and like doing things and seeing things and having new experiences um, and now that I live in a super walkable city I just find myself you know seeing my sister more living life way more spontaneously um, and just like getting out there meeting new people seeing friends going around the city just feeling super um, autonomous and independent and I feel like I have been doing more things in a day in New York. One thing I love, I, t I say this to everyone, uh, but I love how many things you can do in a day in New York City. Um, Cause in LA it'd be like your one thing is like, you want to go to Target and that's like all you're gonna do in a day. It's like, that's, you need to plan for that. Um, so yeah, I just feel like I've been experiencing more life and as a result, it's been making my art more of a joy to create. Um, anyways. Here I am doing a sticker design for Patreon. Here are the Patreon benefits, by the way. 
Um, this is based off the tote design you saw me working on earlier. I really, really love this design of Rover reading that I just like felt like it couldn't just be a tote design. I wanted to like stickerify it. Um, so yeah. I settled on this Rover reading sticker. But yeah, here is the sticker. Alrighty, you've reached the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, this vlog, I actually ended up filming this like kind of at the end of February because in March, I will be, you know, all my time will be taken up for Mocha Festival prep. Um, I have been preparing for it like throughout the past few weeks, but um, the next two weeks that are coming up, I'm going to be like going home for the weekend to like get some of my tabling gear. Um, I'm gonna be like buying some new stuff, figuring out display. I wanna prepackage things. And then I just kind of have to like emotionally prepare for a super uh, tiring weekend. Next vlog will be a mocha festival vlog and that will come out kind of at the end of March. So you might not see me on here for a bit just because I will be working really hard preparing for the festival. Speaking of the festival, if you are in New York City, I would highly recommend coming. Mocha festival is an illustration and cartooning comics festival that happens in Manhattan every year. It's held by the Society of Illustrators and it's just a really, really fun event. I tabled there last year and that was my first time going and it was really, really fun. It's super hectic and lively and there's so many tables, so many artists there, a lot of schools come set up. Um, a lot of real, a lot of incredible artists are there selling their work, so I highly recommend going. Um, it, it's a lot, a lot of fun. I'm excited to you know take a break from my table and walk around and like buy stuff from other artists. It's going to be March 16th and 17th in Manhattan. I will put the address right here, and my table number is going to be 05151, and I will be on the corner right next to Radia, so you can come and see both of us in one go. I think those are all the major updates I have to say for now. Yeah, I'll see you guys. In in my next one.